Okay, now that we know the derivatives of the basic functions, x to the n, sine, cosine, and exponentials, let's figure out how to combine them. So in particular, let's suppose that we have, we want to know the derivative of x squared sine of x. Well, we know the derivative of x squared, we know the derivative of sine of x, but what's the derivative of x squared times sine of x? Or maybe e to the x cosine of x. Or maybe a product of two ugly polynomials. Each one is easy to take a derivative of, but what about the product? Or in general, if you have two functions, f of x and g of x, what's the derivative of their product? And the first thing to remember is that the answer is not the product of the derivatives. <laughs> this doesn't even have the right units. So for example, let's suppose that f and g are uh, distances, like in, measured in feet. Then f times g is in square feet. And if x is in seconds, then the derivative of f times g must be in square feet per second. But the derivative of f is in feet per second, and the derivative of g is in feet per second. So if you take f prime times g prime, you don't get square feet per second, you get square feet per second squared. It isn't just wrong, it's nonsense. So do not do anything that looks like f prime times g prime. Instead, to get a sense of what's going on, we're going to look at a problem involving some oil wells. I teach at the University of Texas, so we do oil. So let's suppose you have some wells that are producing Q barrels of oil every year. And Q, of course, is a function of time. And the oil sells for a price of P. And so our revenue from the, these oil wells is going to be the price times the quantity. And the basic question is, well, what happens if the price and the quantity change? If the price and the quantity change, how much does the revenue change? Can you say that delta R, the change in the revenue, can you express that in terms of the price, the quantity, the change in the price, and the change in the quantity? And if somebody tells you the rate at which P and Q are changing, in other words, they tell you P prime and Q prime, can you figure out the rate at which R is changing? So we're going to do this one case at a time. The simplest case is where the price is constant. If the price is constant and the output increases from 200 to 205 barrels, so the price is $70 a barrel, well, then the revenue is just $70 times however many barrels of oil you produce. And so the change in the revenue is going to be $70 times the number of extra barrels. If we went from 200 to 205, then the change in Q is 5, and we have 350 extra dollars. Five extra barrels at $70 a barrel is worth $350. So far, so good. What if instead we kept the number of barrels constant, but we increased the price? Well, the price went from 70 to 73. Well, the revenue is 200 barrels times whatever the price is. And so uh, the change in the revenue is 200 times the change in price. It's 200 times 3. That's 600. Okay. Three extra barrels times 200 barrels, $600. Also pretty easy. Now let's combine things. Let's look at what happens if we change both the price and the quantity. So the price goes from 70 to 73, and the quantity goes from 200 to 205. Well, our new revenue is going to be 73 times 205, which I'm going to think of as 70 plus 3. So this is P and delta P, and this is going to be Q and delta Q. And the old revenue was 70 times 200. And you just multiply it out. The change in the revenue is the new revenue minus the old revenue. You FOIL this. You get 70 times 200 plus 70 times 5 plus 3 times 200 plus 3 times 5. And then you subtract off 70 times 200. Of course, these cancel. You get 70 times 5 plus 3 times 200 plus 3 times 5. And you should recognize that the first term is exactly the effect of increasing your production at constant price. 
the second term is exactly the effect of increasing the price at constant production. So a pretty good to a pretty good approximation, what we have in here is what we had in case one plus what we had in case two. There is a cross term, it's but it's small, it's only three times five. Okay. So in general, you're always going to get the price times the change in the production plus the change in the price times the production plus the small cross term. The effect of changing both the price and the quantity is the effect of changing the quantity plus the effect of changing the price plus a little bit. And if you want to know at what rate are things changing, you just take delta R and divide by delta T. So that's P times delta Q over delta T, plus delta P over delta T times Q, plus delta P over delta T times delta Q. And I'm going to write this in a funny way. I'm going to divide by delta T and multiply by delta T, so that cancels. And now if you take a limit as delta T goes to zero, this becomes R prime, or dr dt. And this becomes Q prime, and this becomes P prime. So R prime is P times Q prime plus P prime times Q plus P prime times Q prime times zero. In other words, it's just P prime, PQ prime plus P prime Q. So now we've got our real product rule. The real product rule is that the derivative of F times G is F prime times G. That's what you'd have if you had, if G was a constant and F was changing, you just have F prime times G. And if F was a constant and G was changing, you'd have F times G prime. The total change is the effect of changing F plus the effect of changing G. And in the limit, you don't get the cross term. Now, we can write F times G prime or we can write G prime times F. And you can put the term with an F times G prime in front instead of at the end. And, and you know, it doesn't matter. I don't care what order you put things in. It's one function times the derivative of the other plus the other times the derivative of the first one. So let's work some examples. We want the derivative of X squared times sine of X. So that's X squared times the derivative of sine of X plus the derivative of x squared times sine of x. Derivative of sine of x is cosine, so we have x squared cosine plus 2x times sine. For e to the x cosine, the derivative of that is e to the x times the derivative of cosine plus the derivative of e to the x times cosine. Well, we know those. Derivative of cosine is minus sine. Derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And we're done. We have these ugly polynomials. OK. The first polynomial times the derivative of the second plus the derivative of the first one times the second. Okay. And then you can work out the algebra if you, if you are so inclined. Okay. Finally, the proof. So in general, if you have any two functions, f of x and g of x, the derivative of the product is you have to take f times g evaluated at x plus h minus f of x times g of x divided by h and take a limit. So we're going to write f of x plus h as f of x plus delta x, that delta f. And likewise, g of x plus delta g. And then we did it to exactly what we did before. We multiply it out. We cancel the fg, and we get these limits. This is what we have. And as h goes to 0, oh, we arrange them. And we do the same trick that we did before, divide by h and multiply by h. And in the limit, this becomes g prime. This becomes f prime. This becomes f prime. This becomes g prime, and this becomes 0. So we wind up with f times g prime plus f prime times g plus 0, which is, of course, what we wanted. We wanted that the final answer is f g prime plus f prime times g. And that's it.